Hi everyone, Diogo Marquez here, your friend and sales. Today I want to share with you a tip, a simple tip, a very powerful one that can help you uh, to persevere while you are doing your telemarketing from home. And I'll be honest with you, I, I actually think I forgot about this. And what happened to me today was a good example of sometimes like, it's the same things over and over again, but sometimes you tend to forget them. and when you come across them, and you, you do come across them because you, you keep doing the same thing, like they, wh what you really want to accomplish. And since I really want to succeed in this endeavor, and now that I'm doing my, I did my shift, like I've been covering from door to door to telemarketing, uh, you are, because you keep doing it, right? So keep in, you, you keep pushing through. And sometimes you, you have these moments of, of clarity in all this insanity and it's worthwhile to share because it, it's useful and this is what i wanted to share with you today i i, di I did a couple of calls because today i'm a little tired and i did a couple of calls and one of them he was um it was a, a person that has um, this way of this rough ar around the edges so to speak so essentially i found my myself doing the approach that I do, and I've been using it so far, and it's being very effective, which is you show yourself as kind of a, almost like a psychotherapist, meaning you are very, um, you come across as uh, very calm, very confident, not pushing anything, you're just presenting yourself in a, saying in a subconscious way, saying you're an entrepreneur, just wanna help and you happen to be a PhD in economics. This is an example. So essentially, when someone hears that, right, because all of us, we form Im images in our heads uh, of what you're hearing, right? The, the image that that person is conveying you just by tonality, just by speaking, right? So you are essentially listening. This person actually cold called me, right? He's very, he's very articulate, he's very polite, he's very respectful of my time, Right? And he's an economist, right? And he's actually an insurance broker. So this is a figure of authority, right? And he doesn't sound like a kid, doesn't sound like a really old guy, so this is like probably my age, right? This is how they're thinking about things. So, and as they start probing a bit and say, ask a couple of questions, or as the um, conversation starts to develop, if it's a good thing, and actually that's a good thing, they don't cut you off immediately. So they start seeing, okay, this guy actually seems to know what he's talking about. Let's learn some more, right? So what ended up happening today, and this is what I wanted to share with you, this really powerful thing that you have to implement immediately, it must be your, I've been covering that the first thing that you want to accomplish a meeting, right? So you're cold calling someone, and instead of going like all, all in like the first call, you want to accomplish a meeting with that person. If it's in person, even better, but if it's a Zoom call or Google Hangouts or whatever the platform you use, that's your main purpose. But before that, there are a couple of things that you have to have in place in order to have the thing working for you. The first one that I already covered in a previous video is having this demeanor, this uh, approach of being very calm of being very articulate, speaking slowly, not like you're blabbing or anything, just like articulate, like very calm, like you're listening, like I want to help, right? I can help because y you can, right? And the other one that I already told you about that all the other sh schmuck, it, it's like, it's not real. None of it is, it's all in your head. And that is the one keeping you poor because you're not making enough phone calls because you are thinking about something that in reality, is, it's just not real, right? It's, you are creating this overcomplication in your head. But there's another thing, this is what I covered in, in yesterday's video, is that you get exhausted uh, around like uh, about talking to people, you just get exhausted. This is the one that I struggle the most. And I have days that you j I just, I do much lesser calls than I wa wanted to do. And just, it's because I get exhausted. And today I came to this realization and this worked out for me very well. Cause this was a very um, kind of rough around the edges person, kind of tend to be aggressive and all that. And I tend to do well with aggressive people for some reason. And 
I did something unconsciously that, and it worked. And this is what I'm sharing with you in this video because I want you to use it, really use it because it helps. And this is what I want to share with you. Your first priority after you say your first pitch, your first part of your script saying, hi, I'm Diogo. I have this contact from LinkedIn. I'm a life insurance agent with MetLife. I want to work with you guys. I want to help. Is it something like that, like, like we already covered? When you say that and say it slower, say, so that you are very articulate, very you have a meaning about what you're saying and like being calm, not pushing anything. Like I'm here to help. Like I want to help. I can help without saying it, right? I can help, and telling yourself it's not real, just a human being. But the main thing after you say your first pitch, and, and I urge you to do this I, seriously, like uh, underlining this like r several times because this is really, 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 really important. Like for all the money in the world, the first and foremost objective after you say your first initial part of your script is to get them to talk. Focus on getting them to talk the most throughout the conversation. Remove any um, yes or no questions that you might be asking, like let's say, do you have a life insurance agent? Like something like that, right? Don't ask that. S something like that gets them to talk, right? What, what do you think about the idea? Like uh, anything else other than questions that you might ask that get them to say yes or no. Those are horrible questions. You want to get them to talk. And what happens is, given different types of personalities, if someone is very analytical, is going to be quiet because they like to analyze. That's their comfort area. But if you are dealing with um, people, they are more borderline personalities. Borderline is just a, a coming. It's just they look antisocial. They're like more aggressive, more rough around the edges. They're, like, they're cool people. They just that the way that they t they talk. It's like throwing an armor, but it's all just. Um, the smoke in a mirror is, is they they want uh, people not to take advantage from them uh, pretty much all of us none and none none of us like to be in a position of taking advantage from right but this specific type of personality shows that immediately it's like uh, jump the armor you know like co calling them okay jumping the armor because they are telling you essentially that if you don't take advantage of me I will stay with you Right, that's essentially what they're doing. So they, they say, like, uh, talking in a nil manner, not directly towards you, which is like, say, those motherfuckers. They use words like that. It's just the first time you're calling, right? They don't know if you're even older than them, right? But they like those motherfuckers and all that. They say, I'll kill them all. And uh, notice, I'll kill them all, right? They're like saying, right? You're getting an approach there. So. I noticed that all my conversations, all of them bar none, it, the ones that I did focus on getting them to talk the most, I got the meeting, I got what I wanted. And the ones that I didn't, right, it didn't work. So you have essentially three stages out of this. The first one is nailing your pitch and being very calm, uh, like you're, I'm here to listen. Right? You, you are thinking about that, right? I'm here to help, right? Tell me about yourself. You, you have that uh, mental image in your mind when you're calling people. I don't know how, how that works. I just know it works. If you're thinking about killing people, right? People are going to um, perceive you as aggressive, even if you're not saying it, just saying the same words. It just, it does this vibe. It's very hard to, I just noticed that the, the days there was very calm people responded calm, more calmly. In the days I were more upset, uh, I noticed it just didn't work. I got people more aggravated for some reason. And I pretty much was telling the same thing. In, in my mind, I was thinking that I was pretty much telling them the same thing in the same manner, but it doesn't, there's small inflections in the way that you speak and breathing and all that. If you are more like up on a, the upset side, people are gonna feel that. So you have to, at least this is what I do, I, I write down uh, what I want to accomplish, um, like getting my PhD in economics, getting my CFA shareholder, getting my, my, my money right, getting my house right, all the stuff that I want to accomplish. I write all those down, right? 
and I have this uh, folder of pictures and stuff that I really want to achieve. I even like um, wrote down stuff in diplomas, like in the future, right? You are seeing it in reality, and it's it's does wonders because it's just for you, right? Do it for yourself. It's like you want to be like a PhD in like physics or something like that. Right? Get the diploma from the, the like the college, right? And just just for you, obviously, not gonna fake it to the world. It, that's not about that. It's about you. It's about you seeing your name in the thing, right? Now you believe it because you see the diploma, right? So every day that you are working towards doing something, right, you see it, right? It's uh, just like your bank account. Just uh, do a print screen and use paint or something like that and just change the numbers to the number that you want to see there. It uh, does wonders for you. And obvi obviously you need to do the action, but it's just gets you in the right mindset because you're doing this on a consistent basis. This is all repetition about the same day over and over again and you're improving. Because think about it. If you're not where you want to be yet, you're not that type of person yet. You are working towards getting like that. It's like you are not a place to run the marathon yet, but you're training, right? Eventually you're going to get there, right? When you do get there, you become the person that you want to be today. You're not there yet today. This is This is the beautiful thing about it. It's perseverance and in the process I found that when you um, when you share what you've learned with people it helps you figure yourself out better because you are trying to explain to people something that you uh, found that works and today was super powerful because I, I'm, I'm saying I'm super tired today but it worked because s probably because I'm super tired <laughs> to be honest and probably because I, ha I have my mindset right regarding what I want. And I came from a place of I want to I wanna listen. But because I'm so tired, probably ask some things in a way that got the other person to speak. And you feel something. It's like in the end, when the conversation, like w when we ended, he told me, I really enjoyed this. Could you imagine this guy just five minutes earlier you were saying those motherfuckers and those yeah 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 all, all those from here to <laughs> from A to Z you can imagine and you're listening to that right because you have a headset on I was just like uh, like standing over there and just listen to will this guy ever shut up because like no I'm so exhausted and I have to listen to this but because I'm so I was so exhausted and I am so exhausted today I didn't want to talk right so I think my brain like pulled like a, a kind of a trick on me because he kept getting the other person to talk so he could eventually uh, like get exhausted and shut up because for me I would just hang up the phone, right? So we enjoyed the conversation and this is, this is a weird thing because he didn't say anything, right? He just talked, right? And he enjoyed it because he associated like a good moment because you're coming across as therapeutical. You're coming across as a figure of authority because you, you're not teaching anything. You are being an educator. It's a really different thing. Teaching is like forcing someone like, uh, I do this because our program has this be all these bells and whistles and all that. He didn't say that. He said, and you didn't criticize anything because he told me you was uh, in a different career and you never criticize anyone. You just, you just say, well, the only thing that is important to, to see is the maturities of the, the, the insurance that you, that the policy that you have, because there are several ones. All of them are th just different. So it's just a matter of you figuring out what's best for you. See what I did? I, I just, I didn't criticize anything. I just said, these are different, right? And you happen to be a life insurance broker, right? You didn't say that last part, right? But in his mind, is like, okay, he told me some, something I, did, I didn't know, right? So maybe I can get my assistant to send all the stuff that we have to him. See, you didn't criticize anything, right? You're not associating yourself with like speaking in an ill manner regarding other insurance company, all that, because that's a little silly. You're just saying, listen, this is what I do every day. I'm here to help and I can help. And notice this part, I can help. And you just showed like a small example. Just, well, this is some, uh, these are some examples that you can use in insurance. and. This is one part that um, all of us say, I didn't say you have to, because I have more things to do, right? So we have to take in consideration because there are different demands, there are different needs, so there are different types of policies, right? 
And when you say that, right, you're not criticizing anything. And, and when you're talking in a way that gets the other person to speak in the end, they'll keep talking. And they'll start, they seem to start getting more aggravated, but in reality, they are liking you. Because they are, they're just, um, the only thing that is in the back of their mind is like, don't take advantage of me because I'll become a customer. It's the weirdest thing. So I wanted to share this tip with you. So I just wanted to come back and say, get yourself in the right mindset, right? I am such and such. I have this amount in my bank account. I have this car. I live here, something like that. After you watch the pictures. This is what I do every day, actually. I watch the pictures and then I write down what I want, what I see, where I see myself in in one year and in 10 years. So in one year, it's like, actually I do the 10 years and then I mentally know exactly what I want to be in one year because I, I have it already subdivided. So after you do that, it for some reason, it gets you in this mental state that you like, you're more focused, you're more clear, right? You know what you have to accomplish. And now you have this uh, marathon you have to run today, right? in my specific case, is doing a next amount of phone calls. And the problem that I face, because you'll face different problems or even the same, maybe, or not. The specific um, trouble that I have every single day is, is that I get de-energized every time that I make a phone call. And someone, uh, some, I, I see some articles online talking about call reluctance. It's not about reluctance. I, I don't have a problem calling anyone. Re I really don't. because. It's not real, I know it's not real, but something happens to me after I call someone, I, I get exhausted. So I've been looking of ways of figuring this out. And the, um, the thing that I found out today, and this is a byproduct of me sticking to this because I need to be successful. So I have to persevere. And when you want something that bad, y eventually if you stick to it, right, y you need to improve, right? So you need to figure ways of getting around it and today was like a, a good surprise because it was uh, I see you already have the information in your head and sometimes you're looking for answers and you already have the answer you just need to implement it but sometimes you forget it and in order to not forget it I want to share this with you so you can you don't forget it because this is how you're gonna solve this and the trick to this is knowing your script telling yourself it's not real it's just a human being and the other one is getting them to talk and I urge you and like underlining this like five times one zillion get them to talk and you do that by asking open-ended questions because you'll find that if you get them to talk if the majority of people that you're talking to they are the ones talking the most they're going to feel better because the world is telling them to shut up the world is telling all of us that we are irrelevant and it's just not true the problem is that all of us we have a relationship problem and we are dealing with people there where it's not going to work out and you have to go through a lot of these people in order to get to the yellow ones and to the green ones like i told you in the, in the, like we talked about in the previous video so you are thinking about, okay, I'm, I have my, uh, my money right, I have my college education right, I have all my life, get, to get, uh, get, get it together, get everything right, right? But that is a byproduct of people that are the green ones, right? The ones that did buy into your dream, the, the girl that saw your application in college and liked what she saw, right? Because if you got with another dude, probably you wouldn't like, it's just like the same college, right? or it's a job application, or it's like a, a company that, a large company that can carry your product in their stores, right? It's the same thing, it's just, you're dealing with people, right? So you, you have to become a psychologist, essentially. And I noticed this, and I've noticed that because I have my profi profile, I'm very aggressive in nature, this is my default state. I'm learning to become more of a, a psychotherapist to be honest. I'm not trained in psychotherapy at all. I have training of going door to door and go calling people and all that and co doing some copywriting. And you start noticing things, but sometimes I notice that you tend to forget s some important details sometimes. I don't know why that is, it just happens. So 
Yeah, and you, you could uh, even say it's like a practice, but I don't think so. I think it's like a focus because I'm so exhausted sometimes. And today I got this cool uh, vibe that happened, and I just wanted to share that with you guys because it's really important. I, like I'm telling you all this again, once again, so that you can get this right because this this is critical for you to keep doing the phone calls every single day. This is what, what what's going to get there. So wake up, get your peace state, right? Meditate or whatever the thing that you, you it's your you time, right? Forget about selfish, forget about that. It's about you time. You wake up, you feel calm, and the stillness around you, like everything is in peace. Okay, let's let's move on to the next stage. The next stage is motivation. So your folder with your pictures and the things that you want to achieve, right? The third stage is you writing down exactly what you want to achieve in that time. You have your PhD in economics, you have your house, you have the money right, you have whatever it is that you like, your uh, direct dreams, the thing that you want to accomplish. Now, you tell yourself the three main things like I told you in the previous video, which is, I want to help, I can help, it's not real. This last one, you keep repeating it yourself to, to yourself, it's not real, it's not real. Right? So, when you go about and then call someone, right? you know your pitch, say, John, my name is Diogo, I'm a life insurance agent. We talk about the, the script, right? And after that pitch, there's going to be a silence because that person is assimilating the information because you didn't speak very fast, you speak very calmly, firmly, like very articulate. And there's a silence there. They don't know what to do. They don't know what to say. And in most cases, if you are dealing with decision makers, remember, this is all about talking with qualified people, because unqualified people, it's, it's employees, forget about those people, it's, it's the ones that make decisions. So you are dealing with someone that makes a decision. And now is like, in his mind, is like, this is a very articulate person, this is a very, th this is a very polite person, he's very confident, he seems to be a figure of authority, right? What should I say? That's what they're thinking about. And there are a couple of answers that you, you get. It's either, can you call me later? So let's just kill those people, forget about those ones. It's either something like, and this is entering the social um, territory, something like, how can you help? Right? They're asking you a question, right? The third one is something like, another type of conversation, but where they ask you questions, they want to learn more because they're intrigued, right? So the trick here is, and this is where I failed before, I'm not going to fail again in the specific point at least, is that after you figured out, okay, this is a social person, so let's continue to the next step. The next step is you saying the minimum amount possible and immediately end with an open-ended question. Something like, well, life insurance, is the, let's say it's a person uh, saying, well, how can you help? And then you like short it down and say, life insurance can be used in two ways. And then you explain it like those two ways, things like in the maturity and you get paid or in case of something happens. So let's say some, there's a fatality or let's say if someone gets criti critically ill or if it's uh, uh, income protection. So you figure out your speech in a way that it like, like point, 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 very, very succinct, but direct to the point. And after you get that done, say something that invokes them to keep asking more. So you are asking, you are telling them in bullet points exactly what that is, right? And then invoking more of them in the conversation. And you do that by asking open-ended questions. And you have to keep reminding yourself of what your objective is. You already called up, you already got your mind right, you already called that person, you already went through the first step. Now your step is, okay, now from here on out, like from this first step until the end of the conversation, I have to keep that person talking because you want to get a meeting. See what I mean? So get your pitch right in a way that you end with asking them questions, but in a way that you get them to speak, right? And you'll find that if you run kind of a, kind of a, 
a scale essentially where on one hand it's like he's speaking the most and on the other on the other hand you are the you are the one speaking the most this one always loses like nine out of ten always loses so you want to get them to talk and you do that by asking open-ended questions so in my specific case it's insurance you might be real estate or whatever the thing might be right so it's a matter of you following this, these exact same steps, and I'm telling you from experience because this is what I'm doing every day, and this is working. Now it's working, right? I got through the aggression stage that didn't work, and I started getting more therapeutical, got me my c people are more polite, they respond in a different manner, and then I was having this problem in the conversation, this imbalance regarding what I wanted and what was happening after that in initial stage that was working. And I figured out today that essentially is you need to focus from the first step when you say, I'd just like to help that, that first part, right? Then it's about after that silence is going to say something, right? And you figure if it's to kill the conversation or to keep going. If it's, if it's to kill the conversation, you say something like, of course I will. And then you disconnect, have a nice week and have, you disconnect the conversation. But if it's someone that like asks you something like, how can you help, right? So it's like bullet points of what you're doing, not in a way like you're like pushing, like killing them, just just being an educator, like being like, like I'm a psychotherapist or like I'm an economist, like I'm a physicist, like I focus on the specific types of computer issues. And I notice that people come across this as a really um, as a tough situation and we have figured out a way of doing this better. Right, and like, do you happen for some reason to like s something like that? Right. So, just focusing on like, on the one hand, you start with what you know, but it's like, what you need to uh, how you need to structure this. Is like, when you talk, it needs to be like twenty percent, and then th they do the other eighty. Right. <coughs> so, you are answering them, but with a mindset of finishing with the question so that they can keep talking and you'll notice that when they start going off to Pluto which is a good thing sometimes because you don't want to tell them to shut up right people are fed up with that people have problems so when come one when, when come on someone comes in and kind of gives them freedom but in a um, not restrict environment, but it's like a psychotherapist, it's like a doctor, right? You are seeing that person as a figure of authority and is completely focused on you, right? It's all about you. But there are boundaries, and this is an important part. It's not someone like uh, running through you. It's not about that at all. You are a that person is a medical doctor or is like a computer science major, right? They know that thing, right? You are asking them a question, right? And they are helping you. I say, what do you want to know? Like that millionaire when I visited him, I said, I have a, a couple of questions. And like, we sat down and he asked me, what's the problem? So in my mind, uh, he was like focused entirely on me, right? So I could like, what's the problem, right? And that's the important, that's important key factor, having this mental image that you are someone there that can help, you know your thing, right? You know your stuff and you want to help, you are w uh, showing them this, this uh, wish th that you like, you are really want to help, right? But you're not saying, I wanna help, I wanna help. It's like, without even saying it, it's, it's a weird thing, it's a mental thing. People feel that. And when you are giving them permission to speak, right, people feel that. And you have to remind yourself that you are making a phone call to someone that might be behind an institution that's making like billions in revenue, and you might be making a phone call to someone that is unemployed, staying at home. It's a human being, right? And all of us are triggered uh, uh, regarding the specific types of emotions and things like that. So it's all a matter of the types of resources that people have, and the better you get at dealing with people, you'll accomplish more in life because you start navigating, navigating around the things that, okay, this is one, another one of those. So this is a process, and I understand that people want to like perfection all together like in one, in one go, but it just doesn't work. It's a, a feedback loop process. You like do calls, 
see this happened today actually this worked right and most times most things won't work you get like one out of a hundred or something like that it comes comes with the process but when you do get things right you have to make a point of understanding and realizing exactly what worked and what works is like i told you so let's go through this once again because this is so important so wake up stillness time like be calm be peaceful then it's about motivation get your motivation folder with your pictures and all the stuff that you want and the diplomas with your names and like bank accounts with your the number that you want to achieve the third one is writing down exactly what you want to achieve getting super specific you actually write it down it's something about writing something happens i don't know what it is but you just work then you say to yourself i want to help i can help it is not real and then you call that person when you call that person look keep looking at yourself in a mirror like the small one that i have behind me it's like looking at yourself and saying staying in a calm stance like head back right after you do your tonality exercise like like we already covered and when you call people make sure you're speaking like slowly right and then very articulate and being calm and there will be a silence after you say initial part of your script like t like we t mentioned in the previous video and then when they start communicating so saying something different like your whole point remember is to get a meeting right and to get a meeting you have to it's going to be like a little bit of a ping pong and the ping pong is you asking questions and ending with open-ended questions so that they can keep talking and when you have conversations that the most most of the weight is towards them so they are the ones speaking the most you will win this is one i want to share with you guys i hope you enjoyed this video remember to subscribe and click that bell button below so you can get notified every time that i make new videos like this peace stay strong my friends